And here's the deal with the, the little kids uh, and what's coming up out of um, underneath those tents in Central Park is they're bringing children up, but the problem is, is the babies and the children are dying when they get to the top. Um, it has something to do with oxygen, and they, they, um, they're not all dying, but a lot of them are dying, and so it's really hard. Uh, they got the tent set up in a certain way, and another thing is that, that this, these kids and these babies cannot even be exposed to the sun for a second. Um, they're just dying. It's killing them because they've lived underground in this thing, in the pitch dark down there. And um, so what I'm told is they're trying to actually get the ventilators down to the children down there, but then there's a problem with electricity because um, I guess electricity isn't, that's a problem, trying to hook all these uh, ventilators. They got to, because they have to almost like start working on the, on the children before they even bring them up. We're looking to uh, produce over 200,000 ventilators by the end of the year. We've uh, sent many ventilators to Latin America. We've sent many ventilators to different countries in Europe, Africa, and all over the world. We're, we're making thousands of ventilators now a month. We started off with essentially very little, and we've become a ventilator manufacturer, so to speak. And we're helping a lot of, a lot of countries. We've sent them to France. We've sent them to uh, Italy, a lot to Italy. We sent them to Mexico, we sent them to Russia. Moscow's having a tremendous problem. And we've sent them to a lot of different countries, many. And uh, we have a full supply in our country. The amazing thing is we started with very few and not one person that needed a ventilator did not get a ventilator. So that's a pretty amazing statistic. There's more tunnels. Um, there's First of all, there's tunnels being the, the U.S. military is uh, going into these tunnels and bunkers all over the country. So just watch the earthquakes. Where you see there's earthquakes, those aren't really earthquakes. They're blowing those dumbs up. Um, and uh, there's more tunnels than is being reported. Um, there's more. Uh, the Pentagon Pedophile Task Force, for one, we've located more. There's more. And um, also, Coming soon, um, you're going to learn about uh, probably a great deal of the source of a lot of these uh, babies and children in New York. The problem is um, what, the, what our task force discovered is if we release it, it's a problem. Um, it's being worked out. But if we release it, it's probably going to cause riots. Um, that's it's yank. It's unbelievable. Um, it's global, but I, I, if I get into the details, we anyway, we got to work that out. That's coming soon, though. We know uh, how they did this, uh, how they got mo how they get a lot of these babies and kids and children, and uh, it involves CPS. Babies, we said the social services to do it, unfortunately. They get the babies from families who can't can't look after the baby and who don't want the baby. Really? Yes. Um, so that's what I'm going to say for now. Um, yeah. I just wanted to jump on and let you know that, that that's what's going on. The babies are dying when they get them up. That's what's happening. So they're really, really, really trying. So it's a military operation. Oh, the other thing I was going to tell you is um, the detractors out there that try to tell you that only the Department of Justice or law enforcement in the United States uh, covers things such as this um, They're deceiving you because here's the deal the the reason the Pentagon pedophile task the reason that the military is involved and that's where uh, Our information goes to it goes to military generals. I know their names folks These these generals that are doing this. I mean don't don't be don't get don't let uh, my detractors and those liars Buffalo you this is really happening the uh, the issue, it's jurisdiction. The military absolutely does have jurisdiction on this because we're in a war. And right now, President Trump is now the commander in chief, as you know, and we are in a war. So we're in a war. He's the commander in chief and the military is executing military actions. They do have jurisdiction under the surface of the earth, even on the continental United States, because that's where the kids are. I mean, think about it, folks. Uh, they're not going to send the FBI down into into tunnels. Th these guys are uh, specially trained 
And uh, even so, there's a war going on. They're fight, they're killing each other down there. So uh, absolutely pray for our soldiers um, and pray for President Trump. Pray for Melania. Pray for General Milley and just and all of our military. Uh, I think, I think I'll probably leave it at that so I don't lose this internet connection. Um, and pray for the babies. Right now the numbers fit like 50,000. There's gonna be more, I'm told. I'm told there's, there's way more there and we're finding more tunnels. Oh, the other thing is, is all these tunnels, these aren't all um, t tunnels that are necessarily appearing on the maps either. Like the dumbs appear on the maps mostly. Um, but there's a lot of tunnels that are being found in the more local areas that were um, created by local governments and that type of thing in town cities all these freaks set up their own little dungeons underneath their own little town so there's way more and uh, this is going to go on for a while um but god bless our military uh we're winning we're winning president trump is the commander in chief now the military is answering to him they know exactly what they're doing don't be bullshitted by the liars who are trying to tell you that uh using words like hope porn and, and telling you that you're being lied to because somebody's giving you hope. Oh, you can have more than hope. You watch your president. He knows exactly what he's doing. The first lady knows exactly what she's doing. The generals know exactly what they're doing. And I'm gonna leave it at that so I don't lose this connection. God bless you folks. Uh, let's see, I can't see. This is Timothy Charles Holmesuth with the Pentagon Pedophile Task Force. Over and out, love you. They're bringing babies and children up from underneath the ground where they were being held, you know, captives uh, for crimes against humanity, everything you can think of, sex slaves, adrenochrome production, selling their organs. Uh, some of the kids are, they're, de they're horribly deformed. Their eyes didn't develop, their ears didn't develop. They've never seen light. I'm not gonna get into all the gory details. Um, you can use your own imagination for the horror, but that's what's going on under those tents can use your own imagination for the horror but that's what's going on under those tents in new york yeah so um so it's a friend of my mom's she's a nurse she's 69 years old she volunteers so apparently um she is working in a mash type unit in central park and I don't know what all the details of what she told my mom. I don't know if it's more than what I've already told you, but she just said the thing with the kids, it's real. And I have to tell you, it's horrible. So horrible. And she said to please everybody be praying for those children and for the medical people. That are Dude, I know somebody personally whose girlfriend is a nurse and knows other nurses and she's in contact with one of the nurses at Central Park and they say they're just rescuing kids that are severely screwed up like they were sex slaves from birth kind of situation oh, some of them are deformed um, but she's 100% sure that she trusts her friend and I know her personally so it's not like fourth hand information it's like it is second hand but she says the rescue operation has begun, and that's maybe probably what the ships are for. That's close, very, very close to the dumb entrance. Mm -hmm. oh, when they bring the kids up, they can under in dark. They can put them in a tent where it's dark, so they because they can't stand the light of day. Because a lot of them have never been in the light of day, mm -hmm. and some are genetically engineered. And most of those, when they brought them up, died. And that's that big, huge mass grave that's on being seen on a lot of Twitter posts now today. Somebody saying Jennifer's asking Gene, please explain why kids die when brought up. So if the child is or a person is born down there in the dark, and his, they're essentially just a slave or a tool, and they get you know brutalized every day, and they're very fragile in the first place, and they've never been in the light of day. And I've experienced this somewhat myself when we go to sea in a submarine, and I've been out as long as um, 123 days straight, and when we surface, I can't, my eyes can't take the light of day, and I sunburn within minutes. Like 15, 20 minutes, I get really, really bad sunburn. And so you you can't take broad daylight like that. You have to adjust to it slowly. And if you've never been in bright daylight, your eyes don't have the ability to dilate enough down to be able to take that sunlight. And your skin has never developed the melatonin in the skin. 
um, excuse me, the melanin in the skin to take sunlight. That's what you see with animals in caves where they're, they're, they become albino after a few generations because the bodies don't make the melanin anymore and don't need to. And if you don't need something, that's why they, they, their eyes eventually completely go away. They don't even see them anymore because it's dark down. There's no use to have them. So, the, you know, the, the body is made differently to be adapted to that type of environment. So that's the same going on here. These, some of these kids are fifth generation They've been taking kids since the 40s. So if you say every 20 years is a generation, you have the 40s, the 60s, the 80s, 2000, and now we're going to 2020, you have fifth generation down there that were born down there. Four generations have been born down there from kids taken back in the 40s, had children, and then they had grandchildren, and then they had great-grandchildren, and those had great-great-grandchildren. So, I mean, you're literally starting to adapt the, the people down there to being in the dark all the time. And this is a picture of one of the kids with some kind of odd hand like thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does not look like a regular hand, does it? No. It doesn't look like a regular ear either. No. Interesting. So they went in the dark because, the, you know, like you said, they learned a lot when they rescued the kids from California where they bring up in the light and many of them didn't survive, right? Yeah, they lost 10% within the first week. That's the same picture there. Yeah, just circling and showing you specifics here. I know, I'm sure that what they're pointing at there. They're saying that there's something that's part of the person that's way far away from where a person's head would normally be able to extend. So how can this person's side of their face or head be that far over? Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. They do disgusting things mm -hmm. to, to create just, you know, things that should never be done. Okay, let's go back to this picture real quick. Now, I, I do agree with uh, everything that Gene had to say about this. Uh, this is clearly a child. Um, he is apparently mutated, um, but as far as the appendage above his head, this is another possibility. It could be a hand. Not that I agree with the anatomy of this drawing, um, but it is another theory, another possibility. I'm just another normal day in the ship doing dental cleaning on a pale, hairless person. Hands look so again if somebody had um the virus i mean yeah maybe they can't clean their feet their teeth for a few days but if you've been a slave like an ultra slave they don't care about your teeth and quite often they need thousands and thousands of dollars so if they're reasonably new they, their teeth will still be in bad shape and they're cleaning the teeth and things to you know to help get the teeth healthy and save them and this is some of the guys suggesting what some of the hybrid stuff they might have been founding finding down there i think that's tony podesta art oh yeah that's just something you really want in your house, isn't it? <laughs> okay, if you want to know what kind of sick things these people are doing, look no further than Tony Podesta's art. Um, this reveals a lot about them. It reveals a lot about what they're doing. Um, it's, it's sick. Um, but it, it also might possibly show us glimpses of what the children, mutated children, may look like underground uh, possibilities maybe these are inspired by them perhaps in a very sick twisted sort of celebrated way um, the forming of the monster with the child and it's it's very revealing um, very revealing so how did this whole operation go down the assault on the deep underground military base beneath New York and the rescuing of the children that were trapped within. Luckily, we have a very credible source who can give us a little insight. Nighttime rescue operation. Look at that, nighttime. Gene just talked about that, right? This is Timothy Charles Holmesmith. Pentagon once said, this is a quote from him, the, uh, from his, his newsletter, he, he specializes in human trafficking. Pentagon once said the operation was done under cover of darkness, it was also because of the kids' eyes and skin. Why do you think PG&E shut down the, the power off? That was a military telling the PG&E to shut the power down. They got to, to go in the dark. So they went in with all night vision, all in the dark. They did this stuff in the middle of the night, Pentagon 1 said, and they blew all those underground fires. And because those military boys were pissed, they just blew it. There was a tremendous amount of emotion there, Pentagon 1 said. Now, I don't know if they're talking about the California 1 gene that was happening earlier. It talks about the Trump wall. A lot of children. They're talking about this one in New York that what they found on their, the condition of the kids, the military got upset. Mm -hmm. It was too much with all the, the terrible things they saw, so they got the kids out and they just burned the thing. 
Joe M. from the Military.com Daily News writes, There's a subterranean world war raging beneath our feet. Donald Trump tweets, To all of our youth who are missing the start of their Little League seasons, hang in there. We'll get you back out on the fields and know that you'll be playing baseball soon. But if you separate a couple of the sentences there, very easily it says, To all of our youth who are missing, hang in there. We will get you back out. Coding? Here's a worker going into uh, one of the tents in Central Park. The worker is carrying what appears to be a box of pampers. Lisa Schoonrad writes, yes, great minds. These are not hospital beds. These are victim rooms. Thousands are being freed from trauma right now. Here's a little closer look at what she's talking about. The victim room. And uh, here are some more victim rooms. Here's another picture of the operation in Central Park. And here we have a picture with several uh, interesting details. One, you'll notice the nurse has Bible verses taped to her back. And on the cot to her left, you'll see what appears to be a very small hand. Now, you'll also see on a desk to her right what appears to be a sippy cup. Here's a picture of a what appears to be a very malnourished leg. Richard Cordona writes, they're being pulled from the tunnels. There's a MASH hospital set up in Central Park, New York, screaming for body bags. They estimate they need 100,000. They estimate they will lose 4-6% to of the victims they pulled out alive. Horrible torture and sexual abuse. Many were bred for this and have never seen the light of day. Some are deformed. All are malnourished. Many needed respirators because the air in the tunnels is stagnant. Officers who've been in the tunnels are losing it. They're issued barf bags before they go in. Their bodies piled up. I don't know how true this is, but one guy said some of the bodies had tiny bites taken out of them. They're speculating that the live, starving children were eating off the dead. Darkness Falls writes, POTUS will need to take over the communications network to report this. Cabal Media would never report it accurately. People living around Central Park and such can't see makeshift hospitals full of children. People would panic. D-Class. The bringing liberty to children. Vincent Kennedy writes, Now based off the numbers of last year's deaths, one would assume our current hospitals would be able to handle the load. Many more deaths last year. Why the need for the triage in Central Park? Is it actually for more victims and not COVID patients? This person's comment. Okay, take a look at the posturing of this nurse or doctor. Uh, this person writes, do doctors bend down when speaking to an adult? Do doctors serve adults cereal with milk? Why is there a military serviceman sitting bedside? Have you noticed the faces of these nurses? Almost the same face I make when playing with my nephews or trying to cheer them up. These are kids. If you need to see a photo of the kid's face, you're just weird and borderline pedo. I don't really agree with that, but that's their point of view. Now, not all these photos are from Central Park. Some of these are from other facilities, such as uh, the Comfort and the Mercy. Um, these are personnel, medical personnel, uh, showing a training video about being safe during COVID-19. Um, but if you look in the back at the whiteboard, you see a grid with uh, classifications for children of different ages, I presume so that they can assign different medicines or treatments for them. Lion King writes, looks like we, armed forces, are removing children from tunnels in L.A. and New York. Human and child trafficking is going to be stopped. Starts today. Hospitals are empty to house children. Same with the ships on both coasts. Very, very tough two weeks. Pray. Brandon writes, just talked to a buddy. He's an ICU nurse uh, in one of our city hospitals. He told me they're mandating nurses off due to low census. He says this has been the case for weeks. I don't know what the hell's going on here saying about a virus and meanwhile you've got people doing this okay I'm, I'm really looking for stuff that's as recent as possible and this is from the New York Times just a few days ago uh, treating coronavirus in a Central Park hot zone uh, it basically goes over you know what they see they see rubber boots on the outside they see going in and out protective gear uh, it's talking about the uh, uh, the organization that's running it, 
The clinical staff, more than five dozen emergency response volunteers drawn from the organization's nationwide roster, work 12-hour shifts. The infection control protocols they rigorously enforce are different and appear stricter than those being used to treat coronavirus patients in American hospitals. Where protective equipment has run short, health workers are not always trained to use it and many are, have contracted the coronavirus with some dying. Thus far, Samaritan's Purse leader said, none of its workers have fallen ill at the New York Field Hospital or at a similar one in Italy. So yeah, this is another thing worth noting here. Uh, the facility in Central Park is actually very close to the Mount Sinai Hospital within walking distance. So if they need to access Mount Sinai Hospital or the facilities there, it's within reach. So any overflow that's being sent to the hospital can get sent to the field hospital, uh, etc. Work in tandem. Okay, this is another really interesting segment. It says, while the field hospital maintains a laboratory and pharmacy and is able to perform x-rays and provide intensive care, about a tenth of its patients have had to be transferred to another facility for more specialized treatments. On Monday afternoon, one of the patients was being transferred out of the tents to an ICU at Mount Sinai. They can provide a higher level, so we're back and forth all the time, Dr. Tem Penny said. That higher level care includes extracorporeal membrane oxygenation or ECMO, which uses a machine to oxygenate a patient's blood directly, temporarily replacing the function of the heart and the lungs. Hmm. So, uh, yes, if you're underground, it seems like you're gonna have problems with oxygen. Hmm. This person writes, just took this screenshot from Fox News inside one of the new treatment rooms in New York which many are saying could actually be the comfort rooms for child trauma victims. I didn't remember seeing these the other day. Why spend extra money on the cute one versus the plain Jane device if these rooms are for adults? Here's a little close up. Here's the picture of the pallets of crushed soda, Twix, M&Ms, and Starburst being loaded onto the hospital ship. Could be for the crew, but sure seems like items kids would like. But not just rescue children, but what about the children of the elite that get arrested? You can't send them to CPS, too much corruption still. Plus, they need treatment, either physical, psychological, or both. So, here's a close up of the pilot itself. Full of all sorts of goodies. Seems like a little excessive. Maybe not. Many people do that. Or uh, maybe it's nothing at all. Maybe this is some care package that some nice company sent the workers on the ship. So what do we make of this? Are we really saving children from sex trafficking rings around the world and around America and under America and under New York? You know, I don't think the mainstream media is going to talk about this. I don't think you're going to hear about this anytime soon. I don't think news of this is going to come out, quite honestly. Um, maybe years from now, probably, but don't look to see physical evidence of it. Just, uh, I mean, this is what you can do. We can seek and we can seek truth out and not rely on the media, but we can rely on each other because we're all we got. In unpaved roads, there's Green Valley, then under White Hat control of Sulapa, or Hulapai, excuse me, Hulapai Mountains, east of the mountain range, 35 miles southeast of Kingman. That's out on the way out to uh, Las Vegas from Flag, Flagstaff, Arizona. Then you have Rankin Mountain, north side of Rankin Mountain, and I'll just act, you know, from now on, I'll just, if it's under Whitehead control, I'll say afterwards. Mount Lemon, Page goes all the way under Hoover Dam and the Reservoir, Safford, Santa Catalina Mountains, the Sedona, Arizona detainment camp located under the Enchantment Reservoir in resort in Boynton Canyon, and then under White Hat control, the Wiki Up Complex, and that one was just found in the process of cleaning up some other things, and they took it out when they found it. Then there's the Yucca Mountains. You can actually see this as you drive on R40. If you're driving towards California, it's on your right, and it's easily, uh, it's four massive, you'll see four massive large power cables penetrating into the side of the mountain for that Yucca Mountain. There's a picture of the, uh, facility where you go in right there. Look at that. 
Then we have in Arkansas, a White Hat now controlled facility in the vicinity of Hardy and Cherokee Village. This is taken under White Hat control during Hurricane Dorian. And then we have the Pine Bluff, 34 degrees, 13.4 north, 92 degrees, one minute west. And that's still under the dark hat side in california that was an article we saw at the beginning where they been that's where they started the takeover of all of the massive interconnected california system 29 palms marine base is now under white hat control it was identified in, in military airspace area as our area r2501 which means it's a no-fly zone and that was southeast of ludlow california now, Um, through the Ridgecrest tunnels, they collapsed them as they came in, then they did a uh, series of three tactical nukes. The first blast was at 6.4, second one was at 7.1, and another one followed that at 6.1. And if those, for those that understand earthquakes, your, your initial shock is the highest, aftershocks aren't lower, so that's not natural, it's really obvious that that was intentional. And Then uh, you can see the lake there about this, which completely made the China Lake uh, base that was on the surface have to be completely rebuilt due to that large facility. And people freak out when I tell them this, but that was a Mark Ultra base, what they call a, a spark grab grid, where they have you know a large nuclear blast that followed that out to come in and lay hundreds of layers of steel flooring with cages in them that they put children in when they special forces a large large group of special forces came in they rescued 35,927 children from this facility it was one of the primary mark ultra f development facilities on earth mm -hmm. so thank god for our military like trump says and q says because that's a lot of children that you know would have been With that we're going through a horrendous situation it's just you know they're in these cages and lights and bells go off and they get electrocuted all the time and mistreated badly to you know turn them into mark ultra slave bots then in darwin uh four miles west of darwin city there's a dump then we have deep springs that's now under white hat control at 37 degrees 22 minutes north 117 degrees 59.3 minutes west That's, uh, then we have Fort Irwin, 35 degrees, 20 minutes north, 116 degrees, 8 minutes west. That was a detainment camp for renegade civilian ops after they were, you know, Hillary got in, they rounded up all, all of humanity into these detainment camps. That's what, every time you see that, that's what that means. Then under White Hat control, Edwards Air Force Base in the area where Diamond Creek and the South Fork of the Yuba meet. Then under... Uh, still under Black Hat Control, George Air Force Base, under White Hat Control was Helendale. That was the Lockheed Underground Facility. That was technology and secret projects development base. Los Angeles is under White Hat Control on Highway 14 towards Edwards Air Force Base after Palm Day. This was for technology, the Illuminati secret projects. This facility is near the, the Hot Chapai mountains reported it's reported that this goes 42 miles uh, excuse me 42 levels deep it is heavily involved with electronics and high-tech aerospace research mount shasta and many people that live in that area know how you see all kinds of stuff there all the time it's a massive base it's for advanced space technology genetic experiments magnetic advances space and beam weaponry Um, this is the deepest known facility. Um, it's over 800 in California. It's over 800 miles deep. Kern River facility, the hollowed out mountain next to the hydroelectric facility. It's a Kern River project near Bakersfield, California. The Napa Valley facility is now under white hat control. This is where they used to grab people that would go through the Napa Valley, do wine sampling. They'd sign up and they'd see if they have relatives or people that missed them. They'd grab them and take them underground here. This was located the primary entrance of the Oakville grade north of Napa. Tunnels also connect with the wineries all throughout all of Napa Valley. It's used for white slavery and mine control, as well as direct satellite communications, laser communications, and continuation of government site. Uh, in this case, we're talking continuation of the Illuminati government. 
the, in other words, the deep state. This was located on the Oakville grade in Napa County, and it's a total of 87 acres, this Napa Valley facility. Northern Air Force Base is now under white hat control. Next base, Quincy is at 39 degrees, 56.2 minutes north, 120 degrees, 56.5 west. Then near Palmdale, we have the Palmdale Boulevard, uh, they call it Palmdale Base. It's the McDonnell Douglas facility called the Uano facility. And you can see it better with uh, from the Three Sisters Hills area to the south of the facility. It, this base is involved in high-tech aerospace technology. Then the Presidio, which is the massive system that goes under, that I was talking about earlier, that goes under all of San Francisco and out under the harbor to Oakland. That was a FEMA DOD site uh, for Region 9 of the regional office. This was neutralized with underground burnout, which caused fires to be seen all the way down to Porter Ranch. The San Bernardino base, which is now under white hat control, was at 34 degrees, 50 minutes north, 34 degrees, 16 minutes west. Now, I got north there again, I don't know why. Was under the entire San Bernardino. We go to Colorado, my home. <laughs> Alamosa. And I talked to somebody who was living out there, seeing all the black helicopters, all of this with the special forces. They cleaned that completely out. The Book Cliffs is still under dark hat control. The Boulder right. facility has been cleaned out. That's a headquarters for the EMC, and the type, which is a type of electromagnetic mind control system that was going to be used once we were all highly integrated with all the nanofibers and nanotech and smart dust that are putting in our vaccinations and our air and our water. So they would use that as well as for their Marcos slaves. And as well through your your, your smartphones, your all your smart devices that would make us all into little bots for them. This is genetic. Uh, this whole uh, big huge facility was for genetics and geology mining, as well as related to to advancing technology for tunneling and underground construction. Under White Hat control. That's part of the huge facility that went, as we'll see, from DIA, Colorado Springs, NORAD, Cheyenne Mountain. Um, that was for the Canada, U.S., and FEMA. Hundreds of people are on staff. It's 4.5 cubic miles of underground caverns, 45 underground steel buildings. They had a uh, complex of tracks and satellites and missiles and submarine entrances and much, much more. This NORAD facility also controlled the Monarch uh, Mark Ultra Slave that had the end times programming, which is known as Alex Janus and Alexis uh, for callback when they were going to do with Hillary their nuclear war and then round up the renegade civilians and they would activate those bots to help take people out. That's part, they still have a, uh, a lot of those bots. They, from what I've been told, six million have been taken out or you know got a hold of and taken the implants that they put in them out, and they're you know getting their personalities and their beingnesses put back together and getting the demons that they put in charge of each personality once they do the torture and create those personalities. But there's still some, so you know when we see the report coming out in maybe with the Durham around March, I would be ready because. You know, that's why if they have to do martial arts for these bots, they don't even know that they are. And then that NORAD facility was 1,287 miles of underground road. Then that's all now completely under the Alliance control and completely cleaned up. Then there was the Fort Collins, which is still not completely done yet. Uh, that came up into the University of uh, Colorado State University at Fort Collins. And then the DIA Denver complex, which consists first off of five buildings they dug out and put in there before they laid down the swastika runways for DIA and the buildings. And then they had um, 74, these two primary buildings have, are 70 floors high. The, this facility goes, point, is, goes down eight cities literally un, stacked on top of each other under Denver and the lowest city is 22 miles in diameter. So this is a massive facility. I've actually been on the train coming from, you know, flights and listen to, uh, you know, people talking, oh, you know, two stories, oh, don't get off at the, when we get to the main terminal, I got a special tour to go under the big stuff. So, you know, if you're paying attention, you can see that and that, you know, all of that 
is connected and underneath there and you can see it when you ride those trains if you're paying attention you can see the train tracks going off in different directions and this facility was also for concentration camp for separation of personnel when they would put martial law in after the nuclear world war three three and if you go around dia and look the barbed wire all around dia is facing in not keeping people out it's keeping people in that barbed wire faces in not out you can also see pipes and everything coming out of the ground you can see that huge cigarette that continues up until they got this under control you could see semis coming up and dumping dirt and then literally sink into that cigarette come up facing the other way with materials to take out there were two labs uh uh, destroyed by scientists that gave their life back in 2012 taking out a dead man switch that this lab laid right underneath Pena Boulevard for those people that live in Colorado during that time there was a 4.7 earthquake and Pena Boulevard was in excellent condition they tore the whole thing up and then they re you know came in with trucks removed all that debris 